Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined. Uh, it's well to that time of the year again. It's time for when you're going to see a lot of coaches come on here. And uh, pleased to be joined by Chad Reiner, the head football coach at Ionia. Hey, Chad, how's it going? And uh, a couple more weeks left in the uh, in the pre kind of thing before camp starts in uh, in three three to four weeks. Yeah, we're we're finishing up. We basically got seven days. And then our summer stuff is over. Our kids get uh, about 10 days off is what it works out this year. And then, um, yeah, and then the season starts. I mean, where'd the summer go? It's the end of July already. So, yeah, excited. Um, enjoyed the summer so far just with some of the stuff that our, our kids have been able to do. We got a lot of kids back, which makes the summer a little more enjoyable because it's a little bit more fine-tuning the varsity level than it is, um, you know, teaching and, and installing, which has made the summer um, – you know, just, just kind of, it's just more fun um, when you're a little bit more advanced like that. So yeah, been good overall though. Um, excited to get the, the summer finished up with a couple more competitive things we got. And then, uh, and then yeah, excited for a week off as well. So. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, before we get into this year, let's talk about, you know, last year, of course, um, you know, five and five on the year, got into the playoffs, had to win the last three games of the season uh, to do it, but what, what 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 can you say about the momentum that you guys got from last year, winning those games, and 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 if you were, don't remember the last three weeks of the season across the state of Michigan, uh, those games were pouring. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's got into the playoffs, and you know, getting the getting those big wins. What did that mean to 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 get that accomplished? I, I think just kind of where our program is at, like you know, to to continue to step forward. Um, the, the, the thing that we kind of measure where programs are at by is if you make the playoffs or not. And then I think the next step is, you know, if you're, if you're winning playoff games, I think that those, they're very clear steps in our state in terms of like where programs are at. And so obviously for us, like we making the playoffs is, is something we, we want to be able to do consistently every year. So, um, you know, kind of making it two out of three years, I think uh, in some regards validated that we're, we're going in the right direction. Um, and, and, uh, it was, it was nice the last three weeks, the weather did not really hurt us that much. Uh, we played Lansing Catholic, one of those games who just throws the ball all over the place. And so that was obviously to our benefit. Um, and then went and played Forest Hills Eastern, um, who ended up the following week, uh, losing to South Christian by, uh, one possession South Christian ended up being state runner up. So like we, we got to see like some very high level are a very high level team in the playoffs and got to play their facility is just fantastic. So it was a great experience for our kids. Um, and, you know, we didn't, I felt like we hung in there and I thought that was, it was kind of good for our kids. A lot of who are back this year um, to be able to hang in there against a team like look at Forest Hills Eastern wins that, you know, very easily they could have been the ones that were playing in the state title game. And so I think our kids seeing that we could hang in there against um, a, a team of that caliber was good for us. And like I said, we got, you know, 16 starters coming back this year. And um, we're kind of at the point in our program where I told the kids, like um, our measuring stick is no longer making the playoffs. I think that, that we're ready to take the next step where we want to be competing for conference titles, competing for district titles. I think that's the next step um, that, that we need to get to this year to, to say that, you know, we had a successful year. I don't think we can say, you know, go five and four, make the playoffs is a successful year for us this year. I think everyone's on the same page with that. And I think that's kind of contributed to a pretty good summer for us thus far. And as the guys know what the expectations are, and I do think we've moved that bar, um, you know, from making the playoffs to, to we, we want a little bit more this year. Yeah. You mentioned the guys and now you get to talk about them. Um, time to talk about the guys that will be uh, representing Ionia this year. Uh, let's start with the, uh, w- let's start with the skill positions and then we'll go from there. So we have uh, quite a few guys back from last year. We do, we are replacing our quarterback. Um, So Travis Tucker, you know, was very athletic, um, ran the ball roughly, you know, 20 times a game, really, you know, kind of used him more as a, as a running back type player. We have this year, uh, junior Nolan Hart has kind of, you know, separated himself and um, he's, he's not, not fast like Travis. He's a little bit more of a powerful kid and uh, throws the ball a little bit more. So we'll, we'll look a little different on offense. We're never going to not be, we're never going to be a throwing team, but um, we do have, I think, the ability to throw the ball a little bit more this year. Um, we got two slots back, Braylon Granger and Tristan Saganic, both, you know, um, started last year. 
Um, Spencer Tooker, who's a really good basketball player as well, has had a great summer at receiver um, and was our leading receiver last year and uh, has has grown a little bit. <laughs> and so he's now, um, you know, a little over six foot tall and, and allows us to do some some interesting things. And he'll be kind of a guy that lines up everywhere this year. And then, um, you know, the other one is Henry Castle, who's kind of like our H back. And he's, you know, six, three and um, is really an athletic um, person for us. He kind of plays like a tight end position, a little bit of wide out too. And that's where we'll be a little bit different on offense is, is we can, we have, we're, we have the ability if we want to, to spread the field a little bit more. And, and Henry gives us a bigger body and Henry's, I mean, as far as it's, it's fun watching him catch the ball, but his, his best attribute is that he he's a, he's a really good blocker. And, um, and so we can kind of maneuver him around where we want to in different situations. And so skill wise, um, you know, at the receiver spots and tight end spots, we're in good shape. Um, Brennan Brownell graduated, um, Brennan's brother, Tyson, and then Walton Sanborn, who's a junior, um, both are going to be three-year starters. Walton started last year on the D line and did get a few, uh, you know, handful of carries a game, returned to kickoff in a game last year is really an explosive player. Tyson is like the exact opposite of his brother. He's got a little bit more shake to him. Brennan was just straight downhill all the time. Tyson's got a little more shake. So we feel like we have some good depth at the running back spot this year too, which is good because both those guys play defense. So, you know, skill wise, we're pretty excited about what we can do. Um, it's just going to be a matter of, you know, getting the ball to those guys uh, via throwing it, you know, it's going to be our, our biggest challenge this year. We have the capability to do it. And it's just going to be a matter of if, if we're going to execute it or not. Okay. Let's go to the linemen. Now the offensive and defensive. Yep. So we lost uh, one starter last year on the O line, um, Aiden Wenzel, who was all state honorable mention. Um, so pretty big loss for us to replace, but that was the only starter we lost. Um, the, all the guys coming back, we had several of them that started at points during the year. So we've got Seth Woods is, was an all-conference player last year, and he'll play their center tackle. Kellen Ferguson returns and has really done a nice job of, of um, he's grown a little bit, done a nice job this summer, is, is kind of one of our leaders on the offensive line. Um, we've got Caden Leonard as a returning starter. Wyatt Erich started for us um, on the offensive line last year, and is, is really looking forward to him at the linebacker spot this year as well. Uh, who else am I forgetting? Uh, Jonathan Rico started half the year last year. And, um, you know, is back. Um, Landon Steffens is a junior who had a great winter and has stepped in. Kendall Cusack played um, a little bit on the varsity last year as a sophomore. So he's back. So, I mean, we have we have a ton of depth. And I really hope I'm not forgetting anybody um, as far as who got minutes last year. But we have a ton of depth um, on our whole line that we're, we're pretty excited about, frankly. Um, it's just injuries happen every year. Yep. And it's reassuring to know that. Well, you hope you don't, obviously, we could take an injury or two and we feel like we, we wouldn't really miss much um, if we did. So it's really um, I think that's really a staple staple of a successful program is you can withstand some injuries and still have success. You know, a guy going down isn't going to necessarily end your season. So we're pretty, pretty excited about what we got up front. Um, D line wise, um, you know, Aiden Wenzel, again, was a great defensive lineman for us last year. Hunter Barker was a fantastic uh, nose tackle for us. And we got to replace both those guys. Um, so we've got a, you know, a handful of guys that, that we can with that. We've got Walton Sanborn as a returning starter. Um, one guy I forgot to mention too, is our tight end Carter Starks is back was an all conference player last year as well. Um, he is a fantastic down blocker. Like Carter is, is got a little nastiness to him. He's a great kid, but man on the football field, he is a fantastic blocker for us. Um, and he'll, he'll, you know, hopefully have a chance to play some DN this year as well. Um, Henry Castle, uh, again, is going to, is going to slide to defensive end this year as well. Our biggest issue will kind of be finding who's going to replace that nose. And that's one of our, you know, we, we have a handful of questions going into the first week of practice. And that that's probably our biggest question mark is who's going to play nose tackle for us um, this year. Cause it's, we, we run a three, three, and it's very important that that person be able to be disruptive and, um, Parker was so disruptive and it, it will make us look differently this year. Cause we don't have a kid like Hunter um, on our team right now that, that can step in and kind of do what he did. So it'll just make us a little different, not necessarily better or worse, but just different. So yeah, pretty excited about our, our big guys as well this year. All right. Let's go to the linebackers and secondary, probably some of the names you already kind of mentioned. Yep, absolutely. Our secondary um, 
we actually return everybody, which is, which is almost unheard of, I think. So um, it's all, it, you know, it's uh, Gavin Albert had a good year last year. Um, primarily just plays defense and special teams. He's one of the safeties, Spencer Tooker, Tristan Saganic, um, Braylon Granger, Again, all these guys that are the skill positions on offense are all returning on defense. So um, we've had we've had some moments where we've looked pretty good defensively in the secondary this summer and some seven on seven stuff. Linebacker wise, with with Henry moving from linebacker probably to defensive end, then um, you know that that opens up a couple open spots. But we still return. Um, Wyatt Urge was a starter last year and and is returning. And Parker Seidelman, um, who also is another one of those guys that can fit in the offensive line and who was forgetting somebody. But uh, he he's a returning starter on defense as well, um, and and the only spot will be kind of filling, figuring out who that who that Mike linebacker is in our three three, and and so far like Trevor Hodges has been a guy we've taken a look at. Um, there's a couple other guys we've taken a look at, but but um you know overall um, I think that we do have some depth at our linebacker spot. Landon Steffens was a great JV linebacker who will get some reps there as well. So um, we have feel like pretty good depth there at the linebacker spot as well, and. You know, one of the questions we kind of got to get filled along with our nose is, is figuring out who that Mike linebacker is going to be. All right, let's go to the uh, let's go to special teams. So uh, Parker Seidelman is our punter and kicker. Honestly, we have not done a lot of extra points this summer so far, but we've done a lot of punting stuff and um, he looks good there. Kicking wise, um, you know, he kind of struggled towards the end of the year. Uh, hopefully we can kind of get that shirt up because it's as a coach, like, I don't want to have five two point plays on my play sheet every week. I'd rather have one or two and then just send the kick team out. If uh, we happen to score. So uh, hopefully we get that shirt up, but he started off the year fine. And then, um, you know, just, just kind of struggled towards the end, but um, you know, he's a senior and he's a great kid and he works really hard at it. So I would not be surprised if he just doesn't have a fantastic year this year kicking. Okay. So we've talked about the players. Now let's talk about the schedule. Um, and it's a, it's it's a pretty good one because most of the teams in your division have um, uh, made the playoffs last year. So let's I'll go through, I'll just run through this real quick. Um, August 29th, of course, starting the season at home against Belding, uh, September 6th at Eaton Rapids, September 13th home against Portland, uh, September 20th at Olivet, September 27th home against Charlotte, October 4th home against Lansing Sexton. October 11th at Lansing Catholic, October 18th at St. John's, and then finishing out the regular season, October 25th home against Lakewood. So uh, as, as I just mentioned, most of those teams, I think outside of only two, everybody made the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when you start rattling that schedule off, I'm just sitting here thinking like, man, there might not be a lot of wins on that schedule. It's a, it's a it's, it's, it's tough. We just don't get many breaks in our conference and our, our two non-conference games like Belding and St. John's, um, you know, St. John's is, is really on an upward trajectory and Belding's just always tough. Like they're just tough every year. We haven't beat since we renewed the rivalry, we haven't beat them yet. And so um, there, there aren't many, there aren't many weeks off, which is one of the reasons why that, you know, that depth we have on the old line and in some of those positions is so important. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, Portland is a state title contender. And then you kind of look at the rest of it, like Charlotte has made the playoffs, you know, and had seven, eight wins, a um, handful of years here. Now Sexton last year was eight and one. Um, Olivet made the playoffs. Lindsay Catholic made the playoffs. Like there just isn't, there isn't much of a break there. Um, looking at the schedule, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, and that's, but that makes for, we'll know who we are if we are lucky enough to make the playoffs. We'll know who we are because if you can survive, um, you know, our schedule and our conference, then I think you're, you're pretty well prepared for the playoffs because most of the teams you're playing are in the playoffs as well. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. Um, definitely looking forward to the the challenge and the, and the amount of preparation that every single week takes. Uh, but it is challenging. And it means that um, if you, you know, you take a week off or you take a practice off um, you're risking quite a bit when you do that. So we can't, we don't have that luxury of doing that. Um, Cause you know, they're just, you got you to grab your wins when you can. And if you take a day off and, and maybe lose one that you shouldn't or lose one that um, that you really need, then you put yourselves in jeopardy of not making the playoffs or getting out of the, the conference title race or anything like that. So, yeah, it's tough. Um, but, you know, most things that are worth it are. So, yeah. OK, so what so we're let take us through these next few weeks. I know we're kind of 
you know, in that, uh, we're, you, you know, obviously you still have the practices that the MHSA has given you for this month. Um, you know, you have those. So take us through these next few weeks as we head into two a days. Yep. So this morning we, um, we, we just had our workout, which is basically an hour and a half, come in, kind of loosen up, lift, stretch out. And then, um, I usually don't condition them on days when you have evening stuff, um, in the morning. So like we have a evening, just camp day, basically just, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, just a helmets only practice type thing. And so we have that tonight, tomorrow morning, lifting tomorrow evening, we have a competitive thing with Saranac and then they've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And then we come back on Monday and we've got a uh, lifting in the morning, competitive thing with PW Tuesday morning lift, Wednesday morning lift. And then we're going to do something competitive with faller as well. Um, and then uh, they're done until August 12th. So then their only job is to get their physical turned in uh, between then and August 12th. So yeah, that's, that's basically it for us. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, I always say July is more busy than August is in football because we have evening and morning stuff in July. And, and most of the time in August, you know, we just have morning practice the first week and then practice after school after that. So it kind of settles down as odd as that is once the season starts. All right. Well, Chad, thanks so much for the time as always, and best of luck to the Bulldogs this coming season. Thanks, Casey, for taking the time to do this. Appreciate everything you do for high school athletes and our athletes in particular. So thank you.